I'm Cody Jones and I'm a welder. So basically welding is you're going to take two pieces of metal with, depending upon what they are and you're going to use another metal as an additive to make them stick together using heat and chemical reaction. Uh, obviously with any kind of like especially when it comes to like construction aspects of everything everything starts with planning and then you go into the actual aspect of doing the practical but so we'll start with welding and usually if you're in construction you'll get like a, a blueprint or you'll get some kind of drawing or specification that's handed down to you to say hey this is how I need a built this is what I need built these are the specifications you know it'll tell you different kinds of rods or metal types stuff that you need to use backing gas and then when you go to actually doing it you'll have certain welding processes you have to mess around with your amperage your um, if you're using a MIG welder your wire feed TIG welder amperage as well uh, backing gas stuff like that there's a lot that goes into it you can work alongside a partner but more times than not with that it's in like a pipe fitter situation where somebody's prepping and then you come in and do the welding or if you need help holding something while you're welding it. So sometimes it's a partner, but a lot of times welding can be very much a lone yeah. process. Yeah, I would you say like so. To tinker with stuff, obviously. Yeah, absolutely. More times than not, I'll just go out into the middle of the shop and just weld something just to do it. You know, it's just, yeah, just to do something different. You know, every time I weld something, it's something different. I'm just trying to stick two pieces of metal together or I'm trying to build something, fabricate anything. You can use welding for art a lot of times too you see a lot of stuff in the you see a lot of stuff in the uh, front yards of people's like these these big RV gates even along to their houses you know a lot of people the way they build the modern houses nowadays are using I beams and they're using um, like they have steel columns stuff like that just you can do a lot of things artistic and you can make a lot of money awesome. a lot of money doing artistic welding uh, just the basics you go from you start off with an oxyacetylene so you're using oxygen and you're using acetylene and it, it combine the gases into a, like a torch where you can cut metal and you can also weld metal depending upon you know the different tips sizes stuff like that um, but that's where you start and then you go from there to um, <clears throat> excuse me arc welding which basically you have a clamp in your hand that you stick a rod that has a flux onto that has a chemical makeup and the numbers on the rod determine what that chemical makeup is and then you go from there and then you start heating metal up and basically sticking it together just by you know, using your amperage, your machine, electricity, science, all that stuff. Science, awesome. <laughs> With the classes that I took, it, it qualified me through the AWS, which is the American Welding Society, and I got D1.1 certifications, which is structural, uh, for the MIG, which is the wire feed, and then I got structural for stick, which is what I mostly use in the construction world. So I got those structural certifications, and then with TIG welding, I got two aerospace certifications as well. But you can go even higher than that and get pipe certs. You can do all the different kinds of overhead certifications. Uh, usually we'll go in and we'll, we'll turn on all the lights. We'll get the exhaust fans going so that when, if we do start welding, we don't get uh, a toxic environment from all the flux and all that stuff. It'll suck it all out and keep a cleaner environment for us. We'll do a little bit of maintenance, check the welders, make sure they're all working properly or there's nothing wrong with them, they're clean. You know, and then we'll go into our day. What do we have for that day? What are our jobs? Like I worked in the field when I was working for the civilian company and the first thing, well, we get the, we check the truck, make sure the truck's good to go, the welders, we have gas in the welder, we have rod that we need, you know, we have the cables, oxyacetylene if we need it, different stuff for the different parts for the job that we're doing and then we shoot out to the job site and, and go from there and just, do as much as we can in one day and come back. Um, I wouldn't necessarily call it apprenticeships, but I started at the low end of a company with not much experience, and then by the time I was finished there at the age of 21, I was the foreman of the field crew. So you pick up a lot of good experience in the field, a lot of good experience on the job. In the civilian world, you can get paid, like me personally, I was getting paid 16, and I could have gone as high as maybe like 25 at that company. Um, for like pipeline underwater pipeline you can get paid 60 to 80 dollars an hour or higher uh, underwater they're usually getting paid like 200 dollars an hour so there's a lot of money to is be made in welding reflective of like how hard the job is mm -hmm. yeah I mean underwater welding it's I don't know a lot about it but I know that you're going underwater at extreme depths with extreme pressure on your body so that you can't really do it for extended years 
uh, you couldn't like go out and do 30 years in the field and then do 30 years underwater. 30 years underwater is going to kill you basically because it takes it literally takes years off your life. But you know, there's a lot of money to be made. You do 15, 10, 15 years, and then you go do something else. Yeah. Being able to put a big structure together, weld it together, and then you know, kind of look back and be like, "Wow, I did that." You know, because when I was working for a company before I joined the military, we were doing hospitals. We were doing uh, awning structures for shopping centers. We were doing water treatment plants. And it's cool to, like, kind of drive by those places when I go home and be like, I built that. You know, so that's probably the most rewarding aspect of it is just be able to say that you did it. I mean, it is, it's, it's not the easiest thing on your body. Uh, I've been welding for about eight or nine years now, and I've definitely seen a decrease in mobility. You know, my back hurts, my knees hurt, but that's that that comes with the job. It's not an easy job; it's a hard job. So, one, another least aspect would be uh, probably the long hours. I, I'm obviously in the United States Navy, and uh, within the Navy, they have a construction battalion called the Seabees. And within that construction battalion, you have all different kind of construction rates from carpenters, welders, mechanics, electricians, plumbers. Well, not necessarily plumbers, but they do like HVAC stuff like that. Um, and I got into the construction aspect of the military, and I, I thoroughly enjoy it. Uh, being that I did have prior experience before joining, you know, I came in as, and once they figured out that I had the knowledge that I had, they put me in a shop supervisor position. So I kind of oversee all the jobs that are going on. I help plan them. I help uh, with quality control, uh, timelines, stuff like that. In the military, uh, we do like ground up structures, uh, a lot of um, pre-engineered buildings where most of it's bolted together, but there's some aspects where if you need to make modifications, you can weld it. And then when you work in the shop, uh, people will come to you with different projects and, and have to fabricate and, and find ways to make whatever it is they want come to life. So you get, you get kind of a creative aspect from it. Yeah, I actually just recently got back from a five month deployment. We, uh, yeah, we were on a, uh, the USNS Mercy, we were on a hospital ship and we hit bunch of different countries all the way from we, we stopped in Hawaii, Guam, uh, Timor-Leste, Philippines, Vietnam, Indonesia, Malaysia, and we were doing all different kinds of projects there. Not so much the welding aspect of it, but construction in general. We built, we did a lot of tile, a lot of drop ceilings, a lot of different uh, painting. Wow, I didn't even know that the military did that. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Thank you for your show. <laughs> Thank you for the support. Uh, when I was a kid, coming out of high school, I didn't really know what I was going to do. I had done a little bit of welding around the house with my dad, so my mom was like, hey, you know, why don't you go to welding school and see what that's all about? I was like, you know, that's not really a bad idea. I went to a, went to welding school, community college, and got a couple welding certifications, and then I went to work in the real world and kind of realized how much I really, truly loved it and, and wanted to do it for the rest of my life. Cool. Try it out. Try it out. Don't, don't say no before you try it. That's basically the only advice they gave me. But basically, you know, if you're trying to get into welding, you just have to understand that you have to have patience. And I learned that on my own. You know, you can't, you're not going to pick it up the first time. You're not going to get it right away. It's going to be tough trying to learn how to do it and trying to develop that skill, that muscle memory, that, that eye for what you need to do. So you just have to be patient. You know, if it doesn't start working right away, you're going to hit a learning curve. You're going to be learning a bunch of stuff and everything's going to be going fine. And then you're going to hit the top of that learning curve and you're not going to be able to get any better. And it's going to frustrate you. It frustrated me. I almost quit. You know, but if you have someone pushing you and trying to keep you on the right track, then once you get past that learning curve, it's a lot of fun, and you just keep going up from there. I did, yeah. Um, I had a couple, actually. My uh, my boss was probably one of the biggest ones when I worked for the construction company. He was uh, a big help. He was a lot of fun to work with, a, lot of, a good, really good guy, very understanding, willing to help, willing to teach me anything I wanted to learn. So as long as you ask questions, you know, if, if you have someone good who's there for you, you know, they'll should be willing to answer anything you have. Cool. Yeah, just if I got frustrated, he'd be like, come on, man, just calm down. Let's figure this out. You know, it's just, basically that's just it. Just let's figure this out. You know, you can't give up. You can't throw your hands up and, and, and say, forget it. You know, you just, let's figure it out. Let's walk through it. Let's figure out what's going wrong, what we need to fix. How do you, how do you get better? 18 year old me, don't be a dummy. Don't be a dummy. Don't be a dummy. Um, just be smart, be safe. Uh, there's a lot of things that I did working for that company that were not safe, you know. Just know your limit, be patient, and try and learn everything you can because it's going to help you.